Hi everybody, how are you? This is Pastor Aaron Wells. Just coming with you weekly to say, hey, um, just want to talk about the goodness of our God. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. I love me some Jesus. He is truly the son of the living, the living God. Um, God in the flesh. You know, you got to do with that what you can. I'm, I'm, I'm sold on it. Um, I want to send this out to my cousin Arlene in Philly. Just got out the hospital. Arlene, sending you love. Hope you get the chance to see this. Um, just thinking about you. Also want to send this out to um, just my guys from the 70s. You know, Bishop Joe Garrett and his wife, Pastor Selena, came down to visit. Hit North Carolina from Philly. I got a chance to talk to my guy, Gary Devlin. Boy, meatball, shaky. Um, just just my cats, man. Um, Blair Floyd, Ricky Tucker, the Overbrook folks from back in the day, talking with those guys, man. A um, couple of cats from Germantown, um, DeSagio, you know. Um, I love you guys, man. A lot of group memories. God has done some things. We've survived, and now we have an opportunity to make impact in the name of Jesus. Also want to send out some heartfelt condolences to Joy Henderson. And um, Joy, people are praying for you. We love you in the Lord. Just blanketing your family with prayer and praying that the Spirit of God will bring comfort to your, to your family during this time of, of loss. All right. Prayer. I believe that it is the power of communion and communication with God. It's both our dialogue with God, his monologue to us, and our fellowship with him. Um, many of us are praying for uh, the, um, the important relationships in our lives, our, our, our loved ones, and we're, we're not always seeing the, um, the results that we're looking for. Um, excuse me, I'm here to tell you tonight that God is true, and he is not a man that he should lie, nor is he the son of man that he should repent. God is true, and his word is true for me, and it's true for you. And um, I want you to know that God is not forsaken. He is not forgotten. God uh, has not disappeared on, on you. In Luke 11, right, the Bible says that um, the strong man, he guards his, 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 his possession. And it talks about the the enemy of our soul, Satan, and how he blankets us with darkness and he keeps people in darkness, darkness in their mind, darkness in vision. Um, people are walking around in, in the dark year after year after year, day after day, thought after thought, action after, after action. And so we see the results and the madness in our streets and the lack of love and um, the way we treat each other and uh, the abuse and the neglect, we, we see this and it's the evil of the enemy and it's the blanket of darkness that is uh, in our communities and in our households and in our relationships and over our, our young people and it keeps our, our black men incarcerated at such a, a horrific rate. It's, it's the darkness, it, darkness, and it's attributed, Jesus says in Luke 11, to the enemy, uh, Satan, who, who guards us uh, uh, when we're in a lost state and when we're in darkness, guards us as his possession. And as his possession, um, possessions, he, he keeps us uh, away from the light of God and the truth of God and the liberation that comes in a right relationship with God. But this is what Jesus says, and I'm here to give you good news. And this is why I'm starting off, starting off talking about prayer, because it is in prayer that we understand and see these things. And this is how powerful our prayer is. This is what we're praying about. Ready? If people that you love are in darkness and people that you love are, are, are just shackled with defeat and despair, if people that you care about, and it might even be you, um, are shut down because of the darkness that comes from the enemy, here's what prayer will do. Prayer now allows my heart to commune with God and to communicate with the heart of God. And this is the God who says this about the strong man, Satan, uh, keeping people in bondage. It says that when a, one stronger comes and attacks, he not only defeats the strong man, 
he disarms the strong man, but he takes his armor and he divides the spoils and he takes the spoils. Here's what I'm saying to you tonight. You've got some people in your life that their minds are locked down in darkness. Their hearts are shut off in darkness. Their lives, their very lives look like nothing good is ever going to happen. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. He's a, he's a liar. And Jesus says that he is stronger. And that now watch, watch this. Listen to this terminology. He says he will attack on your behalf. It's not that Cecil B. DeMille, that little uh, Jesus that, that people want you to think. He is the Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. He is a warrior. He is a man of war. And Jesus, on your behalf, goes into the kingdom of darkness and attacks it for you. And he ain't never lost one. No, not yet. And he frees you, your loved ones, your friends. He begins to free our minds. He begins to free our circumstances in the light of his love where we can walk in the liberty and the bible says he divides the spoils jesus to the winner goes the spoils and jesus takes what belongs to him that is you and that is me and he brings us into the marvelous light of his kingdom and we now have the opportunity to live the lives we've always been been destined for that's the reality of this thing that the enemy wants to keep us in darkness, always mad, always uptight, always in despair, always in depression. But there is a light that comes from God. And when Jesus attacks the kingdom of darkness, he brings with him all of the forces of his light to free us and to watch this, watch this now, to emancipate us. I love that word to emancipate us. And to open our lives up to all of the goodness that is Jesus. I'm telling you tonight, prayer works. Begin to pray for the people that you love. Don't walk by sight. Don't look at what, don't grab hold of what you see. Because what you see might be ugly. It might be despair. It might look terrible. It might look hopeless. But the devil is a liar and God is the truth. He's not a man that he should lie. You hang in there with God. I'm telling you, Jesus is attacking in ways that you can't see because he promised the Father that all that the Father gave him, he has lost none except the son of perdition. That was Judas. That wasn't you. Jesus is out there fighting for you. Know tonight. Walk in hope. Walk in the hope of the victory that Jesus is freeing you and your family and those that you love from the despair and the darkness. But you got to know it. All I'm telling you to do tonight is to pray. Let's become a people of prayer. Let's pray our way through these dark times, these trying times, and see the salvation of the Lord. This thing is on me tonight, right? Because I believe in the power of God. I saw God do some magnificent things in the lives of some people today that were broken and, and, and just disarmed and just hurt and who had given up. I've seen uh, people who are homeless today just giving, giving homes and rent being paid and seeing families coming back together and just, just watching people come back to the recollection of their right minds. And this is all because of the power of the true and living God. Jesus loves you tonight, y'all. And I'm telling you this, you do what you need to do with this. But what I say is fall on your face. Tell Jesus that you love him. Tell the Lord that you want him and that you need him. And then watch and look for him to do great things in your life. Yep, yep. I love you. Philly, I'll be there soon. Yes, I will. I'm watching you. Surrender to Jesus tonight. Bye-bye.